The primary function of neurons is to transmit information rapidly and faithfully. For that purpose, neurons have a very intricate structure that's uh, fairly different from many other cells in the body. They, in, they produce membranes throughout their cells that are very distinct from one another, are, can be thought of as different compartments of the cell, and as a result carry many different membrane proteins. Overall, there are four major compartments within a neuronal cell. We have these dendrites that are responsible for receiving information and consolidating that information from other cells. They all will integrate that information in the cell body and decide whether to transmit it across a single long axon. Finally, that axon terminates in one or a number of synapses, which allow the information to be transferred from the neuron to other cells. Those cells could be other neurons, muscle cells, or epithelial cells that are secretory in nature, glands that secrete proteins in response to neuronal transmission. Today we'll focus primarily on the axonal membrane, which is responsible for the rapid transmission of electrical information from signals received by the dendrites integrated through the cell body and sent on to the synapse. If we focus on the axonal membrane and shown here, we, to orient you, can see that the outside would be this compartment and inside or the cytoplasm of the axon would be on this side. There are two major players that we need to contend with. The voltage-gated sodium channel depicted here and the voltage-gated potassium channel depicted here. A gated channel is simply closed or open by a particular stimulus. And we'll discuss what stimuli specifically open these channels here. But once they're open, these channels are just like other proteins that we've seen involved in facilitated diffusion, allowing the specific movement of ions across them. In this case, we already know that the axonal membrane, like all animal cell membranes, have ions in a gradient across them. The ones that we're going to consider are set up by the sodium-potassium pump, and we know that sodium is going to be higher in concentration outside this cell, whereas potassium is going to be more concentrated inside the cell. In addition, the, the axonal membrane has a charge differential across it with more positive charge on the outside of the cell and more negative charges on the cytoplasmic charge. This charge differential across the membrane can actually be measured by electrodes as a membrane potential called V sub M that is characteristic of the cells and will be changed as transmission is passed along an axon. An axonal membrane that is not receiving nor transmitting information is called at rest. And the membrane potential of such an axon at rest is typically negative 65 millivolts. We're going to go through um, the changes that impact both of the channels depicted here and how ions move across the membrane to uh, transmit information through the axon. But before I do that, let's think about a way in which you can follow that information uh, in a graphical format on your own. 
If you would hit pause at this point and get a piece of paper, you can set up a graph like one I, that I've set up here where you can monitor the membrane potential of the axonal membrane over time as the axon is transmitting information. As I already said, we start the membrane at rest or negative 65 millivolts and the membrane will sit there until it receives specific information. As we go, as I go on through the rest of this tutorial lecture, go ahead and trace on your um, own piece of paper what you think the membrane potential would look like over time. And then I'll come back to that at the end of the lecture. We'll start once again with our membrane at rest. Both channels, the voltage-gated sodium channels, is, are closed, and so sodium cannot uh, move across this channel. Similarly, the voltage-gated potassium channel is closed, and thus potassium cannot move across the membrane, and the membrane potential is at minus 65. Excitation, or stimulation of the neuron, occurs when positive charges diffuse into the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. This can occur for a number of reasons, which we'll discuss later in class. As positive charges increase on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane, this will um, cause the membrane potential to become more positive. When the membrane potential achieves a threshold potential of minus 45 millivolts for most um, neurons, as a result of these incoming positive charges, the voltage-gated sodium channel is stimulated to open. The change in the membrane potential is the gate that, that triggers the opening of that channel. Sodium, therefore, becomes able to enter the cell, moving down its electrochemical gradient from a, a, an area of relatively high concentration to one of low concentration, as well as from a positive um, charged area into the cell where there are more negative charges. The... Um, Membrane potential becomes even more positive as a result of the influx of more positive charges with the sodium ions. The membrane is therefore termed depolarized. The um, uh, membrane potential can increase as a result of the influx of all of these sodium charges to as much as positive 40 millivolts. Once the membrane potential becomes positive, however, there's a switch in the membrane differential across the membrane with there being more positive charges inside than outside. This triggers two events. One, the voltage-gated sodium channel swings in a cytoplasmic gate which will inactivate the channel and make it not possible for sodium to continue to enter the cell. Secondly, the voltage-gated potassium channel will itself open in response to this ever more positive voltage. And now potassium, which is high in concentration inside the cell, will diffuse out down its electrochemical gradient. As the potassium diffuses out through the voltage-gated potassium channels, the vo the it carries a, a, out with it positive charges and thus the membrane potential will become more negative back towards rest. The membrane is termed to be repolarizing. The membrane potential overshoots rest, however, and can achieve as low as minus 75 millivolts in membrane potential. It's because the um, voltage-gated sodium channels are slow in closing, and so more and more potassium ions are allowed to exit the cell. Eventually, however, 
the um, voltage-gated potassium channel will respond to the more negative membrane potential and close. This will also occur for the voltage-gated sodium channel um, where the gate now in response to the negative voltage has closed, keeping sodium ions from continuing to enter the cell. And you'll notice that the inactivation um, gate has swung out of place back into a reset position for the voltage-gated sodium channel. Once everything has reset, the voltage will climb back up to rest at minus 65 millivolts. This will be in part due to the closing of the voltage-gated potassium channels, but also through the actions of the sodium potassium pump that is involved in resetting all the gradients across this membrane. Now the membrane is ready to accept another transmission coming down from the dendrites through the cell body into the axon. So if you look now at the graph that you've been uh, putting together through this lecture, you should have started with an axonal membrane at minus 65 millivolts, an influx of positive charges into the axon allows the membrane to achieve a threshold potential of around minus 45 millivolts. This triggers the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels, which further depolarizes the membrane, bringing in more positive charge. Eventually, the voltage-gated potassium channels will open and positive charge will exit out of the cell, thus repolarizing the membrane back through fresh threshold below rest, hyperpolarizing the cell for a time before the voltage-gated potassium channels close up, the sodium potassium pump resets the ions um, concentrations across the membrane so that we're back at rest. In class, we'll discuss how this packet of information, which we call the action potential, is used to transmit information through the cell and between cells in the nervous system, as well as um, how this, um, the ability to generate action potentials can be regulated in the brain.